Oh, man. Thank you and cool boots. <laughs> you know, it is all about the shoes. Which is an appropriate thing to share because we're going to be talking about integrity today. Now, you might say, what does integrity have to do with shoes? True integrity is about being willing to show up as who we are and share what we love. I love shoes. So for me to be in integrity is completely congruent for me to talk about shoes. Being in integrity is about being in joy, in absolutely loving every bit of us. So today's topic is integrity. We're rounding out our value series. Here's how we define integrity. We create, we create from our innate wholeness and are truthful in thought, word, and deed. I've been very excited to talk about this value. And you notice it's the toward the very end, and we saved fun for Halloween weekend for obvious reasons. But I've been excited to talk about integrity because truly this value of integrity is at the heart of what we're all about here at One World. So I want to break this value down into its two component parts. First, we're going to look at what does it mean to create from our wholeness, hence the shoe reference. And then we're going to look at what does it mean to be truthful in thought, word, and deed, and how do those work together? So, what does it mean to create from our wholeness? Well, actually, Reverend Annette touched on this last week, because what it means is that we know, really know, deep down in our cells, that there is nothing wrong with us or as Annette said last week, that there is nothing that needs to be fixed. Now, that is not the message that we are used to hearing. In fact, that is downright contrary to what we're used to hearing in the world. And it even seems counter to the self-help movement. Don't we all love the self-help books? And yet inherent in so much of that work is that there is something about us that's inherently wrong and needs to be fixed. So what if we became willing, in the spirit of being in integrity, to reframe the whole self-improvement deal? What if we became willing to see that all we need to do to improve ourselves is to recognize that we don't need improving. That we have everything in us that we need to show up in our magnificence. I love how Annette prays for healing. Because if you notice what she says, is she says, sweet spirit, remove any blocks to healing. Healing wants to happen. All we need to do is get out of its way. Well, integrity and wholeness want to happen. We are inherently whole. What we need to do is remove everything that's simply been getting in the way of us showing up that way. That's the only thing that we need to improve, is to recognize that we are inherently right, that we truly are just as God created us to be. If I had my way, we would sing that song every single Sunday because that is so at the heart of what we believe. I love the bumper sticker I saw one time that said, God made me and God doesn't make junk. We are exactly as God created us to be. So showing up on our wholeness means first and foremost, we have to know that. Second of all, Showing up in integrity means that we need to create from that place of wholeness and stop reacting from our wounds. Now, notice that create and react actually have the same letters in them. Isn't that cool? I love it. Little things like that. It's just something I noticed as I was writing this up. 
Can you imagine being part of a community where we are committed to creating from our wholeness instead of reacting from our wounds? Now, here's how we know when we're reacting from our wounds, because we get really gnarly. We get defensive. We get cranky. We say things like, what did you mean by that? Another way to know that we're reacting from our wounds is if we notice that we've done this before. You know that kind of feeling like, gosh, this conversation feels familiar. Gosh, this relationship feels familiar. Haven't I done this all before? What's up that I keep telling the same story and having the same conversation and being in the same relationships, although the faces are changing? If you find yourself doing that, odds are that we're not creating from our wholeness. We're reacting, or we could even say we're recreating from our wounds, from our past. And the fastest way to recreate your past is to keep reacting from it. Another part of creating from our wholeness is that we are more focused on doing the right thing than on needing to be right. Now, this is a more common understanding of integrity. Integrity means that we do the right thing even when no one is watching us. That's actually one of the hallmarks of maturity when you're working with, with kids and particularly with teens. One of the things you teach them is that we know you're growing up when you do the right thing, even when the teacher, the parent, the guide, the mentor isn't in the room to see you doing it. It also means we do the right thing when we don't get credit for it. And it means that we do the right thing even when it seems like no one else is. That's creating from our wholeness. Now, being in integrity also means that we're willing to integrate all parts of ourselves. And in fact, obviously, the words come from the same root. Here's where my love of etymology comes in. The root of integrity is from the Latin word integritatem. Integritatem, meaning soundness or wholeness. Also from the root is integratus, meaning to render something whole or to become whole. And integrare, meaning to put together parts or elements and combine them into a whole. Notice that the common word in all of these meanings of integrity is whole. And what's interesting about the etymology of this word is that in order to create wholeness, we're not getting rid of anything. We're adding all the parts together. We're not eliminating anything. Thich Nhat Hanh addressed this in one of his teachings. He said, Western medicine emphasizes surgery too much. Doctors want to take out the things that are not wanted. When we have something irregular in our body, too often they advise us to have an operation. The same seems to be true in psychotherapy. Therapists want to help us throw out what is unwanted and keep only what is wanted. But what is left may not be very much. If we try to throw away what we don't want, we may throw away most of ourselves. So notice that integrating and becoming whole is not about getting rid of anything. It's about adding together and integrating all of our parts, even some of the ones that we don't like. So this is your Star Trek reference for the day. There's a wonderful episode from the original series called The Enemy Within. And it, as spirit would have it, it was actually on last night. In case you didn't know, on MeTV, once a week, they carry the original series. If you want to know what time, I can email that to you in case you're interested. This is a wonderful episode where due to a transporter malfunction, Captain Kirk is divided into two people. 
He's divided into good Kirk, or positive Kirk, and bad Kirk, or negative Kirk. And part of the dramatic impact of the episode is the, the crew doesn't realize for at least 25 minutes into the one-hour episode that he's been divided in two. But what they do notice is how differently Captain Kirk is acting. On the one hand, in the one scene, he's loving and kind and compassionate and gentle. In the next scene, now they don't know that there are two of him, they see him being violent and aggressive and unkind, and even attacking the very attractive blonde yeoman that showed up a lot in the first two seasons. They finally figure out what has happened because they divide a dog into two accidentally. Remember that one? Yes, I see nodding. And they realize that it is the, quote, negative side of Kirk that makes him such a powerful leader that the kind, compassionate, loving side of Kirk is almost incapable of making a decision. And in fact, he almost kills the landing party left on the planet because he is incapable of making a decision. He needs that darker, quote, negative side integrated into his kindness and into his love and his compassion to make him a powerful and effective leader. And... Uh, he is horrified when he comes into contact with his own dark side, with his own shadow. In fact, he says, I've seen a part of myself that no man should ever have to see. But Spock says to him, no, properly controlled and disciplined, it's that side that makes you such a strong leader. And he said to him, we all have our darker side. It's part of what we are. Your strength of command and character lies in that darker side. So integration is key to wholeness. Being willing to love every little cell. Being willing to even love those parts of ourselves that we would rather not see and honoring what they contribute to the totality of us. We create from our innate wholeness and are truthful in thought, word, and deed. So what does that mean? What does it mean to be truthful in thought? That's kind of an interesting concept, because how would anyone know if you weren't? Think about it. No one sees our thoughts. So being truthful in thought implies that we are being truthful with ourselves. Being truthful in thought is the inside job part of our definition. So inherent in this is our ability to differentiate between our opinions and the truth, which means that we don't necessarily have to believe everything that we think. Would that be okay? Don't we tend to believe everything that we think? You can all say yes, because we do. So developing the capacity to notice that we have formed an opinion or have a belief or a conclusion about something that happened and that that opinion or belief or conclusion may or may not necessarily be true. Being truthful with ourselves means, as Sam read earlier, that we notice if there are hidden projections or self-deceptions distorting our attitudes. Because being truthful in thought leads to being truthful with our words. And I think Don Miguel Ruiz has one of the most wonderful teachings on this that I've ever read. He calls it being impeccable with your word. He says, speak with integrity. Say only what you mean. Avoid using your words to speak against yourself or others and do not gossip. Everybody breathe. Use the power of your word in the direction of truth and love, which reminds me of mindful speech. And this agreement also reminds me of what Jesus taught us when he said, let your yeses be yeses and your noes be noes. 
we translate that into say what you mean and mean what you say. Being impeccable with your words also means keeping our word. It means keeping our promises, doing what we said we would do. Nothing builds credibility faster in an individual and in a community than keeping our word, than keeping our promises and doing what we said we would do. I shared with the class last Thursday a a story about uh, when Sears Roebuck was first starting and how they did a survey of their customers and asked which customers were most satisfied. And it was not the customers who had never had a problem with Sears Roebuck. It was the customers who had had a problem and Sears fixed it. Sears kept their word. They honored their warranty. And those were the happiest customers. Dr. Maria Nemeth says that the heart of being successful is actually keeping your word. She describes success as, success is doing what you said you would do with clarity, focus, ease, and grace. So clarity is exactly what we've been talking about, being clear about who we are and what's important to us and loving all parts of us. Pema Chodron explains that loving kindness towards ourselves doesn't mean getting rid of anything. Do you notice a theme here? The point is not to try to change ourselves. It isn't about trying to throw ourselves away and become something better. It's about befriending who we are. Just as Kirk had to befriend that darker side of himself, and eventually, in order to reintegrate, he had to embrace his evil twin, as he called it, in order to be transported back and reintegrated. In order for the process to work, he had to literally embrace that darker side of himself that everything in him wanted to push away. Clarity is also about becoming clear about what we're promising before we promise it. This is about being conscious If we say we're going to do something, we need to make sure that we can actually do it because we want to be successful. We want to do what we say we're going to do. So clarity is very important. Focus refers to how we spend our energy. What are we focused on? We know that what we focus on is what's going to increase. So it is so important to be conscious and awake to what are we focused on. I love the song, Michael, because I don't know about you, but 3 a.m. is when I wake up and worry. Does anybody else wake up between 3 and 4 a.m.? What is it about 3 and 4 a.m.? Hi, guys. That that's when we wake up and worry. I know there's some, like, healer or Chinese person that can explain that to us. But I find myself laying there between 3 and 4 a.m. and going, this is a complete waste of energy. Why aren't you sleeping? Seriously. You know, like we know sometimes that we're not focusing our energy. Worry, I think you posted something on Facebook, Lenora, last week about what a complete waste of time worry is. And yet we do it. So it's important that we be very conscious of where are we focusing our energy? Are we wasting our energy on worry and regret and stress? Or are we investing our energy? Isn't it interesting how references to energy always it frequently sound like references to money, spending, wasting, investing, you know, leaking, that kind of stuff? Because it's all energy. Ease, clarity, focus, ease, and grace. God, I love ease. Because we're all very good at being driven and compulsive about getting things done, aren't we? And getting through our list. But ease is all about doing what we said we would do without going crazy, without getting worried and stressed out. Ease is about taking small, sweet steps, one step at a time. What's that old song? Put one foot in front of the other. I think that's from one of those old Christmas shows. 
put one foot in front of the other, and soon you're all the way across the room. That's ease. Not trying to leap across the room in a single bound, but taking one small, sweet step, ripping out one room of carpeting at a time, moving one pew out of there at a time. Clarity, focus, ease, and finally grace. Even the word sounds sweet, doesn't it? Grace. It's been said that the doorway to grace is gratitude. So can we open that door wide by being grateful for our journey? By being grateful for every person who shares our journey? By being grateful for all of our parts, even the ones we sometimes don't like looking at. When we can embrace all of it, whatever it is, without denying any of it, whatever it is, we experience a grace that transcends description. We step into a place of wholeness, of being and doing wholeness. We live from the truth of who we are. We know that we are exactly as God created us to be, right now, without fixing one darn thing. And we know that we are a gift. We are a gift to one another. We are a gift to everyone who shares our journey. We are a gift to this community. And we are a gift to the global community that we are committed to creating, centered in peace, love, and joy. When we get that we are perfect and whole and enough, we show up as that gift that we were born to be. And that's what it means to live a life of integrity. Debbie, would you sing us into meditation?